In this video, I'm going to show you guys the basics of how to color grade and color correct in Final Cut Pro. Let's dive in. I have four new clips, and if you are interested in following along, you can download all these clips in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive right in. Before I start color grading, I have something that I like to call as my Final Cut Pro node tree. Now, if you don't know what a node tree is, basically a node tree is something that you build in DaVinci Resolve, which applies a color correction or color adjustment per each node or per theme. So in Final Cut Pro, it's like the same thing. What basically how it works is like adjustment layers, pin one thing at the top affects the clip before everything else below it. So the way I set up my Final Cut Pro node tree is I start off with my color board. This is used for just any slight adjustments. If I need to do anything in the color board space, I can do that, but mostly I'm using it for an exposure tool. The color wheels, this is where I do a little bit more fine tuning, pit in my color corrections, add a little bit of contrast, fix my temperature, fix my tints. That's how I do fine tune everything here. Sometimes I add a little bit of sat saturation in different areas and highlights, shadows, or midtones. Then I have my color curves. And then I add my conversion LUT. So you can just type in on all, hit custom LUT, drag and drop that. Nextly, I will add in my hue versus saturation. This is to fix any grass or skin tones or shift colors in unique ways on these curved lines. And then lastly, if I wanna do an added look LUT, I will add this last LUT in right here. Now, if you don't wanna to have to set this up every single time, there is a trick that I use every single time. But before I get into what that little trick is, the thing I do like to do is I like adding whatever normal LUT I use 90% of the time. So since I shoot on Lumix cameras, the LUT I end up using about 90% of the time is something called the classic teal and orange. Now, this LUT is part of seven other LUTs that is in my LUT pack for Lumix vlog footage. Now this is for Lumix cameras like the Lumix S52X, the GH6, the G9 Mark II, the S5, the S1H. These LUTs work on anything that shoots in true vlog. But if you want to save time and not have to set up all of these different color adjustments, what you do is you go to save effects presets, you click everything you want to click, I also click spatial transform to fill the image. So if I'm shooting in an open gate like I am right now, it can just fill and already crop automatically into either a 16 by nine or nine by 16. And then it's basically ready to go. And then you name whatever you want and pit whatever category. So I already have mine saved. So for example, if I duplicate this clip, delete everything, and then I hit option E for default video effects, it will automatically apply everything I just did right here onto this clip. And then before you save this effects preset, you do have to go into wherever that effects preset is. So mine is in Matthew Daniel effects. I have mine labeled as default color preset, right click that and make that your default video effect to be able to press option E and have your color corrections be already baked in. Now for this first clip, I am just gonna use the standard vlog that panasonic provides so you guys can color grade alongside with me so again i'll go into my color boards and start off and just bringing down my shadows i'll bring up my mid-tones and bring up my highlights to find an area of exposure i like pro tip is hit command plus seven to pull up your different vector scopes and waveform so i'll notice right now my shadows are way too dark but I also noticed this entire image is just a little bit not crazy saturated. So I'll go into my color wheels and I'll bring up my saturation, bring up my highlights, bring up my midtones. Try to stretch out that image in terms of contrast as much as possible. And then just kind of keep going around playing with all the different color wheels and color boards until I get to an exposure level that I'm really stoked about. And then when I find a nice contrast of an image, when I'm using just the standard V-Log conversion LUT from Lumix or any other company, whatever camera you're shooting on, this works the same way. 
I will go into my color board and then this is if I want to shift any of my colors around. So I'll click onto my shadows and I can go anywhere here. So if I go into my blues, if I bring it down, it's going to make it more orange and red, bring it up. It's making it more cooler. So if I want to go for maybe that teal and orange look, I can bring this up just a little bit to make my shadows a little bit darker, find my highlights, bring it a little bit, maybe warmer tones. Same with my mids. Maybe I can bring some yellows. Maybe I get some more pinks in there. Something like that. So that's what the before and after of this clip has done so far. Go into my color boards again. So I can do a little bit more fine tune adjustments. I will go into my temperature gauge. Maybe I'll bring it just a little bit down. So I kind of like how this looks so far. So far, so far, all I've done is I've added my conversion LUT from Lumix that they offer. Went to color boards. I did some adjustments, a little bit of color corrections, color wheels. I brought a little bit more saturation into the image. I actually would want a little bit more saturation, maybe in the highlights. So I can bring those highlights slightly up and then in the midtones as well just to add a little bit more pop and contrast to the image, give it a little bit more texture. So then I go into curves. Curves is where you can create something called an S curve and this adds a lot more contrast or takes away contrast depending how you make your S curve. So in this, I'll click two dots, one in the middle and one at the middle towards the end. I'll bring my one right here just ever so slightly down to add that little bit of more of a contrast. And I'll bring this one ever so slightly up. You can do a little bit, a lot more fine tuning with this. I highly recommend playing around and figuring out how you like doing your color adjustments based on using the S curves. Now for the red, green, blue, this is where you can get a lot more in depth grading and details. That's a more of an advanced tutorial. If you are interested in seeing the more advanced color grading in Final Cut Pro, let me know in the comments below because I could definitely make that for you guys. Everything I'm doing right now is very slight adjustments, but here is kind of where the magic sauce starts really coming in is using this hue versus saturation and then using the custom LUTs. Before I get into hue versus saturation, let's add a custom look LUT or what I like to call as an added look LUT. Now I have five added look LUTs that work on any camera system. As long as if you were shooting in log, it's been converted to a Rec 709. So there's different looks from an Africa, cinema, black and white, sunset, and teal and orange. Now one of my favorites from this pack is teal and orange. And then there's also legend versions which are more contrasty based images, but let's click teal and orange for this one. This just basically, does most of the leg work for you in terms of actually color grading. Everything that we've been doing so far has been color correcting the image as much as possible. This last part, you add it on and it basically makes your image look super, super professional. Now, again, there's a bunch of different looks that you can add and then you can use this intensity or the mix bar and make it how intense you want it. but. This pair basically is image is almost 100% done. Again, hit command seven. We're gonna hit that side view so we can see our vector scopes. Click this, hit the scopes, hit 133%, and then make sure you're viewing your skin tone line. Your skin tone line is this one right here. So this is what I like to do. So I'll click this, I'll hit my color mask. I'll highlight my skin, try to get as much of my skin as possible. So if your thing says 3D, turn it to HLS, make sure your view mask on and you can do a more fine tuned mask and make it a lot more in depth and detailed. So what I like to do is grab my color picker for my hue versus hue. I will click on somewhere in the skin tone range. And then what I'm gonna do here is try to make sure my skin tone line is as close as possible to the center as possible. And then I will go down to my mask and I'll end up actually deleting that mask. So it actually is affecting the whole clip because Final Cut Pro masking and color masking isn't the greatest, especially if it's a complex 
dynamic clip. Now, I do wanna show if you do own a Lumix camera and your color green Final Cut Pro, I do also wanna show how easy this process is with my vlog LUTs that I do offer and sell. So here is a clip where it just the default sets with the classic teal and orange LUT baked in. Now, Caleb doesn't look like a ghost, so what I'll end up doing is adding a little bit more saturation into this image, bring down my shadows a little bit, bring up my highlights, maybe just a touch. And then if I show you, you know, this is what it looks like with the vlog LUT, just the classic teal and orange versus doing all the work that we just did. It's a lot faster of a workflow using the vlog LUTs because all the vlog LUTs I've created is meant to be getting you 90% there with just a little bit more of contrast and color corrections and less of the whole grading process. And let me show you an example actually doing this. Sorry for the quick interruption. If you've been enjoying this video and you wanna see more videos on Final Cut Pro and me talking about Lumix cameras, you should definitely consider subscribing. Anyways, I'll let you dive right back in. So here is another example. I'm going to hit option E for this clip. Now I can do that same thing I just did, bring up my saturation, bring this down and start color correcting. But I think there's a better LUT for this specific scene and how I filmed it. I'm gonna go down to my LUTs that I have and I'm gonna click on retro, which is this more of a retro looking vibe to the image and then I'm going to start the whole color correction process using my own vlog LUTs. Now I could go in and use retro the legend version which will be a little bit more contrasty and be a little bit less work but I do also want to still show you guys the process of actually color correcting and color grading the images if you're not using the legend version. So again we'll go into the color board we'll just start dropping those shadows we'll raise those mids raise those highlights, go into my color wheels, do a similar process. Now, a lot of the time when I am color cor correcting or color grading, I'm doing it by eye, just because I've done this for such a long time. When I did start out, I did use my waveforms and my vector scopes a lot to really see my image, to see how much I'm pushing and where my image is getting pushed at. You can do the RGB overlay, and this is super helpful to see, you know, bringing my shadows down, making sure they're not crushed, or making sure my highlights aren't way overboard. So that is something I recommend when you haven't color corrected for a long time. But by eye, I can see an image and start color grading it as best as possible with just looking at the image. So, so far what I'm doing so far is just kind of moving my color wheels, moving my color board, trying to get a nice contrast to the image as much as possible. Again, this is more of a fine tuning process, just slowly going back and forth between my color board, my color wheels. And then once I feel like it's at a good point, that is when I'll go in and start doing my color curves. So at this point, I'll do my color curves, add a slight S curve on the bottom half, bring down my shadows, Maybe I wanna bring my highlights a little bit up for this image and then bring my mid-tone range just ever so slightly. I still feel like there's not a lot of color in this image. It feels a little bit dull in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do again is bring my saturation up. Maybe I'll bring my saturation up on the highs and bring it up on the mids and on the shadows just to give a little bit more color to the image as much as possible. I'm gonna go down here into the color temperature and try to warm this image up, but then bring my tint down by maybe say negative four-ish range. And overall, I feel like this image looks 80% done. What I'm gonna do to go fix it is go back to my color curves, see if I can add a little bit more contrast. And then, I'm gonna use my hue versus hue to fix the skin tones, but also fix the grass and the greenery in the background. Right now, the way my LUT converted this image made the grass and made the trees just kind of have this tealish green, which I don't really love for this specific look. I'd rather have this green look more yellow and more warm just because this clip was taken during sunset. So before I do that, I am gonna fix the skin tone. So again, I'm gonna add a color mask. It's already at HLS, that's great. Boom, 
try to select just my skins as best as possible. Hit Command-7, hit View Mask. I will color pick my skins on my Hue versus Hue and then color pick my skins on Hue versus Sap. So I'm gonna move my Hue versus Hue ever so slightly down on the skin colors just to be right on the skin indicator line. I'm gonna delete my color mask and then I'm gonna click on and off. So overall, her skin was a lot more pinker and I made it more of that neutral tone. I'm gonna go into my color hue versus sat. This will either make her super orange or make her have no skin color at all. And I'm gonna find that nice middle ground. Now on the same thing, you can do it separate if you want to be more specific to just your greens. But on the same one, I'm going to select and drag to grab my greens. And then I'm going to bring that up to bring some more greens. I'm gonna shift this over and try to get my grass to be more natural. Now, if you look at the grass, this is a huge difference. This looks a lot more natural than having a blue trees. This is more clean, more natural. I'm gonna do the same thing on my Hue versus Sat, and I'm going to just desat them. You can obviously increase it, but I'm gonna just desat it just ever so slightly so it's not taking up too much attention from the main subject in this image. And then the last thing to add just a little bit of that secret sauce is using a custom added look LUT on top of the vlog LUT, which this one in particular, I'm gonna use the sunset one and I'm going to bring that up. And then that just gave this entire image a little bit more oomph and more of a fun natural look in it. So here is the before and the after. Now these last two clips, I'll just go over really briefly because Watch time at this point is out the window after you've learned how to color grade these two clips. So I'm going to add my golden retro LUT in the legend version, which is more of a contrasty version. Here I added my color boards and in my color boards, I literally just brought down my highlights just a tad bit down. Nothing else was touched. My color wheels, all I did here was bring down my mids a little bit. I fixed my temperature. I made it a touch bit warmer and then I took my tints and I brought it slightly down by negative two. In my curves, I noticed personally, I felt like this image was a little bit too contrasty. So I added my S curve, but I, instead of going down, I went up and then that just made it of a more, less contrasty, more of a natural looking image to reality. And then my hues versus hues does a huge thing similar to the last clip. I'm gonna fix the skin tones and fix the grass in the background. And it looks a lot more natural. And then that is basically all I did on this clip is here's the before and the after. I'll just show you this last clip and I'm gonna speed through. I won't talk as much during this color correction process so you could see my entire workflow and see how fast I can color grade these clips and just see what it's like to actually do this. So option E, classic teal and orange LUT, literally gets this clip 90% done. I will add a, on my color wheels, I'm gonna drop down my shadows ever so slightly. Let me select somewhere else. Highlights, maybe I'll bring it slightly up. Go to my temperature, bring down my temperature. Either I can go extremely on the warm or colder. I'm gonna go a little bit extreme, make it a little more playful. I think there's a little bit more, too much magenta in this image overall. So I'm gonna bring it ever so slightly down, just negative two. Here's that before and after, which is a pretty good difference. Color curves, uh, let's bring it just slightly down on the color curves to give a little bit more interest. And then hue versus hue, I don't really wanna do anything here. And then, yeah, why not? I'm gonna add my added look sunset. I'm gonna drop that down to like maybe 17-ish percent. And then here is gonna be the before and then the quick after of color correcting that clip. There you have it guys. That is how I color grade and color correct Lumix Vlog footage in Final Cut Pro. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. If you are interested in purchasing any of my LUTs for Lumix or added look LUTs for any cameras, that is also in the link in the description below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, peace.